Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Bright Radio and T.E.H. The Hills Productions are proud to present Storytime with Uncle Minnie. And now, your storyteller, 66 out of North Carolina. His name is Mr. Hines, but you can call him Uncle Minnie. Today, we are going to learn how sin started and how it is going to end. Does anyone know how sin started? Does anyone know how it's going to end? Well, the story of sin is sometimes called... The Great Controversy. Controversy? I know it sounds like a big, hard word, but it's easy. All it means is the great... Argument. The great... Contest, game, battle with less echo, fight. And who are the two people in this fight? Ladies and gentlemen, in this corner, his height exceeds the heavens. His weight outweighs the world. His reach reaches everyone. And his age is evermore. The champion of love, Jesus Christ! And the challenger, 66 six out of North Carolina, Satan the Devil. Who did camp? Who, who did camp? Who, who? That's right. Jesus and Satan are fighting in. The Great Controversy. All because of sin. But how did sin start, you ask? Sin, like a rumor weed. Larry Boy, I am that hero. A rumor weed started sin in heaven, in the choir. I know it's hard to believe that rumors sometimes start in the choir, but it's true. <laughs> the rumor was started in the choir by the choir director. And who was that? One time for your was it Kirk Franklin? No. no. Was it Fred Hammond? No. Was it Auntie Donna Taylor, the children's choir director? No. Hello, it's Elmo. And Elmo had been heard by the choir leaders. No, the choir director was the challenger, Satan. The devil. That's right. Satan, the choir director, started that rumor weed. And by doing that, Satan started sin. Satan was given time out from heaven. He was kicked out of heaven. Uh, With his angels. Are you finished? Doom. He was kicked out down here to earth, to your house, to your school, and even right here at church. If you look closely, you might notice one or two. Satan tempted Adam and Eve. Then Adam and Eve sinned by eating the forbidden fruit. Adam, would you like to eat some forbidden fruit? Forbidden fruit. Oh! So to fix sin, Jesus chose to come down to earth. As a baby. He was baptized in the sea. I was baptized in the sea. Hello, Nemo. Yeah, do you remember when the dove, a small white bird, flew in the sky over Jesus' head? And you heard Jesus' father say, This is my beloved son. 
in whom I am well pleased. Later, after Jesus died for our sins, he went back to heaven. <laughs> and one day he will come back again. <laughs> with trumpet sound. <laughs> and take us all back to heaven with him. And that will be the end of sin. That will be the end of... The Great Controversy. The Great Contest. The Great Fight. What can you do until the end of the Great Controversy? Be good. Why? Because when you're good and you do good things, you help Jesus win the Great Controversy. But when you are bad and do bad things, you help Satan win the Great Controversy. By raising your hands, how many of us want to be good? Yeah, yeah, put your hands down. By raising your hands, how many of us will be good? Oh, very good, very good. We're going to pray now for those of us who wrote, uh, put our hands in the air, and especially for those who didn't. Please bow your heads and close your eyes. And Uncle Minnie, this time, will say the prayer. Please bow your heads and close your eyes. Dear Jesus, I thank you for the boys and girls that sit in front of me. I thank you for fighting for all of us in the great controversy. Please help each of the boys and girls and the adults to be good and do good things to help you win the great controversy. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Long, long ago, far, far away, it always rained. And even before there was a lion king, there was a man. And his name was Noah. Hi, I am Noah 2000. Long, long ago, I knew a boy. His name was Benjamin Roman. And Benjamin Roman was a lot like you, except he was unchurched. That means that he doesn't go to church that you and I do. Today, watching his favorite cartoon, he heard a TV announcer say, We interrupt your favorite cartoon with this important infomercial. What's an infomercial? Well, an infomercial is, is a message, uh, an announcement. It's, uh, it's a commercial telling you about something you just can't live without. This is the infomercial that Benjamin Roman heard. Are you watching your favorite cartoon, but you are unchurched? Then we have something you just can't live without. It's the Bible. It comes in different colors and different versions. There's the KJV, the NIV. The ABC and the BET. <laughs> BET, huh? Those are the only letters I know. The Bible is one thing you just can't live without. But what is the Bible, you ask? It's a book full of things you need to live right. It will tell you how sin started. And how sin is going to end. The study of sin is sometimes called... The Great Controversy. But wait, there's more. That's right, there is more. <laughs> this book is filled with numbers. But not just any old numbers, but special numbers, like the number seven, three. And what might be God's favorite number? And what is that number? Forty. Don't believe me? Then listen to the answer to these questions. How many days and nights did it rain on Noah's ark? Forty. How many days was Moses at the top of Mount Sinai getting the Ten Commandments? Forty. How many days did Goliath call out to Israel for someone to fight? Forty. How many years did the children of Israel and Moses wander in the wilderness? Forty. How many days did, was Jesus tempted in the wilderness? Forty. Not at the same time with Moses, of course. How old is Uncle Minnie? Forty. Uh, 
Okay, so that one's not in the Bible, but you see, 40 may be God's favorite number. But wait, there's more. That's right, there is more. The Bible is chock full of heroes. Heroes? Yes, heroes, like Moses and Pharaoh. Pharaoh, let my people go. Moses, I will not let your people go. Pharaoh, because you will not let my people go, God has commanded me to turn your water into blood. Other heroes are David and Goliath. David played by the late Marlon Brando, and Goliath played by Junior Asparagus from VeggieTales. Oh, Israel, I am Goliath. I'm a fighter. I could have been a contender, but I'm just a bum. Oh, Israel, send somebody to fight me. Who will you send to fight you, cowards? I will fight you! But David, you're just a little boy. You come to me with a sword and a shield, but I come to you in the name of the Lord! That's right, and our final heroes, Samson and Delilah. Samson killed a lion with his bare hands, met a woman named Delilah, and pushed the pillars down and yelled, Let me die with the Philippines! <laughs> Did you say, let me die with the Philippines? <laughs> What can I say? I'm only four years old. What did Samson really say? Let me die in the Philistines! Close enough. That's right. We're almost at the end. The Bible is great. A book you just can't live without. And it can be yours for three small payments of $19.95. No, it's free! It can be yours for one small payment of $9.95. It is free. That's right. The Bible is free. Don't believe me? Ask for a Bible from your mom and dad. Free. Ask for a Bible from your pastor. Get two free. And boys and girls, after that infomercial, Benjamin Roman turned off that TV and asked his mom and dad for a Bible. Boys and girls, you are Jesus infomercial. By the way you act, if you obey mom and dad, and if you are kind to other boys and girls, you show unchurched boys and girls that Jesus is life. That's right. You are Jesus infomercial, and Jesus is someone you just can't live without. We're going to ask you all to close your eyes. We'll have you all close your eyes and bow your heads and we'll pray that you remember that lesson. Dear Jesus, thank you for the boys and girls who sit before me. Thank you for today's lesson. Thank you for... Thank you for the lesson that you are Jesus infomercial and that Jesus is someone you just can't live without. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Long, long ago, far, far away, before there was rain, and even before there was a Lion King, there was a man, and his name was Noah. Hi, I am Noah 2000. Long, long ago, I was at the airport, the Sea of Galilee International Airport and I saw six passengers. It was James, James, <gasps> Judas, Judas, 
and Simon, Simon. And these passengers, well, passengers, for those who don't know, are just people who ride on, ride on trains, planes, and even strollers. So you're passengers, and maybe one day you'll be a passenger on a plane too. Well, not only were these six passengers there, but in total there were actually 13 passengers. And today, they were entering the plane. Well, of course, I mentioned there was James, James, Judas, Judas, Simon, Simon. Who were they? Very good for those who said that. You now know six of the disciples, perhaps more than many of the adults out here know. While they were entering the plane, those first six, and then passenger number seven, count with me, there was eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, stop. That's right, there were 13 passengers entering that plane. Now number 13, he had a special name as the ticket taker took his ticket try to say that three times fast. She said to him, what is your name? To which he responded, Christ, Jesus Christ. I'm moving. And as he entered the plane, he went straight to the back of the plane, sat down, and because he was so tired, went to sleep, just like you should at night when your parents send you to bed. Well, Everyone was on the plane, in their seats, put on their um, seat belts, and then the captain came over the PA system. PA stands for public address. He said, uh, this is your captain speaking. Uh, thanks for riding Sea of Galilee Airlines. We'll be traveling just from one side of the sea to the other side. If there's any turbulence, that means bouncing up and down, and your face mask drops down, make sure you use yours first before you take anyone else's, Judas. And so... Enjoy the ride. <laughs> then the airplane began. It wasn't even a jet. And it started taxing. They were up in the sky, flying so high. The captain came over one more time as they ascended up to 35,000 feet, cruising altitude, and said, uh, this is your captain, and again, the weather up here is beautiful, not a cloud in the sky. Then all of a sudden, a violent storm started. Boom, the thunder. Boom, the thunder. The lightning. Let's go with it today. The lightning. The airplane. The airplane started to go this way and that way. The rain started to fall mainly on the plane. That's big alien. And the plane started to bounce up and down. Bounce, that's turbulence. Bounce, that's turbulence. Now the disciples, as they were sitting in their seats, now some of their stomachs got a little queasy. Oh no, Judas. James said to him, no, Judas, get a barf bag. Get a barf bag. All over James' shoes. And they were open toe sandals. Yeah. Just thinking of it, but the plane was bouncing turbulence in a big storm. There was the thunder, boom! There was the lightning, there was the rain. That's like rain. Pitter patter, pitter patter, pitter patter. Well, all of a sudden, the lightning does, did a dangerous thing. The lightning that flashed hit the door of the plane and opened it just a little bit. So now the air was coming in. Someone needed to close that door. Someone closed the door on this plane. And guess who got up to do it? I heard someone say Jesus. No, um, it was Peter. Peter decided I'll do it. So Peter got up and started to go towards the door. But then when he thought about what he was doing, he got a little afraid and decided I don't want to do it. A second time, the lightning hit the door, boom, all the way off, the door is gone. The air is coming inside, sucking things all around, the magazines are flying everywhere, the little peanuts hitting him in the head, and then Peter's trying to go back to his seat, but the wind started to suck him, and so he tried to get back to his seat, and it was pulling him, he was going, Marcel, Marcel would be so proud of me, and pulling him, and pulling him until, boom, he's right at the door, almost being sucked out. The air kept sucking him out the door until the only thing saving Peter was just his little fingers on the door. He was all outside the plane. So Peter yelled, somebody help me, somebody help me. James, James, Judas, Judas, Simon, Simon. Oh, wait a second, I'm Simon. Help me. But no one got out of their seat. 
and just as one hand left and he only had five fingers left on the door, he remembered passenger 13 was on the plane. And so he yelled, Jesus, save me, me, me. And in that moment, yeah, can you see it back of the plane? Jesus wakes up, opens his eyes like you do in the morning, took the top part of his robe off. He was ready to go. While Peter still hanging on, he began to walk towards that door. He saw Thomas, and he said, Thomas, doubt this, as he moved towards the door. Yeah. And then finally, he grabbed Peter's hand just before he let go, and with those arms, one hand, he grabbed Peter, put him back in his seat, buckled him up like a baby, we're at the end. He says, but I'm not done. Almost like the man of steel. He went back to the door. He is about to deal with the storm now. He stepped out of the plane, climbed onto the wings, all this wearing sandals and a robe. He's on the wing of the plane. Can you see his jacket, his robe? Yeah. He looked at the storm, listened to the thunder, boom, boom. Looked at the lightning, slash, slash, pitter patter in his face. The water's coming down. He looked in the eye of the storm and he said, peace, be still, 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 still. <laughs> and everything stopped. That's right. Jesus stopped the storm with a miracle. Jesus saved Peter, James, James. Judas, Judas, yes, Simon, Simon, with a miracle. And here's the beautiful part of that story. Jesus will save you with a miracle. All you have to say is, Jesus, save me. Now, not only does that mean for the little things that happen in your life now, but hopefully your parents will explain to you that you asking Jesus to save you means something far bigger, and hopefully they'll explain that to you. I'm going to pray now that you remember the uh, lesson in our story that Jesus will save you, all you have to do is say, Jesus save me. Please close your eyes and bow your heads. Dear Jesus, I thank you for the boys and girls who sit in front of me. I thank you for the very important lesson in the story that you will save them. You'll save all of us. All we have to say is, Jesus save me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Before there was a lion king, there was a man, and his name was Noah. Hi, I am Noah 2000. Long, long ago, I knew a family. There was a father, a mother, a son, a daughter, and a duck. And his name was Darnell Duck. And Darnell was a very special duck because whenever mom would say, speak, he's not over there, Darnell Duck would go, Mom would say, speak, and Darnell Duck would go, ding, ding. She would take him up the block and she would say, speak, and Darnell Duck would go, ding, ding. Well, this would go on and on, and apparently two young ladies would really enjoy that. Um, now, more special to mom than the duck was her son. Again, in this story, his name is Enrique. Now, Enrique loved to do a lot of um, fun things. He loved to play a lot of games. One game he loved to play was called Fireman. Fireman is a very simple game. You use your mind. You pretend. You pretend that there's a fire over here. And then you dial 911 on your pretend phone. Hello, hello. There's a fire. There's a fire. And then you would hear.
That's right, he would do that over and over again. He, he'd run over here and say, there's a fire, there's a fire. And then he'd dial on his pretend phone, 911. <laughs> 911 takes as long, depending on where you live. <laughs> hello, hello, there's a fire. And then he would hear, Well, after playing that game over and over, then he would finally play his favorite game, Hit the Cans. That's right, a very simple game. You take three cans, you place them on the fence, one. Place them on the fence, two. Place them on the fence, three. You step back. You pick up a rock, and then you throw that first rock. Dink! You knock down the first can. You pick up that second rock, and you throw the rock. Dink! Knock down the second can, and of course, you pick up the third rock, and you throw the third rock. and you knock down the third can. A very simple game, he'd play the game over and over and over. But today, as he went out, something different happened as he played his most favorite game, hit the cans. Now, I had to do it twice, it's coming. Yeah, the good, that's the duck. The bad, that's Enrique. And there's one more, that's his sister, but I can't say what goes with, with her. All right, so today, as he went out to play, what did he hear but As he got ready to throw the rock for can number one, what did he see but Darnell Duck, who went and stood in front of can number one? Now, Darnell's head was lower than can number one, but still, he was right over there. As he got ready to throw that rock, he thought about the words that his mom had said to him, Enrique, don't play near the duck. Enrique, don't play near the duck. But he decided he would throw the rock anyway, so he pulled back and he threw that first rock. <laughs> Dink! <sighs> he knocked down the can. Darnell was okay. Well, as he went to get the second rock, what did he hear but... <laughs> That's right, Darnell Duck went and stood in front of can number two. He heard the words from his mom again, but he decided he would go for it anyway, so he pulled back and he threw rock number two. <laughs> He knocked down can number two. He just needed one more can. After this can, he would go inside. He wouldn't play anymore. And so, as he went to pick up rock number three, what did he hear but... <coughs> Darnell Duck went and stood in front of can number three. He heard the words from his mom. Enrique, don't play near the duck. Don't play near the duck. Well, he decided he would go for it anyway. And so he pulled back, and he threw that third rock. It's a fence low. Let's see that in instant replay, shall we? You pick up four, three, fifty. He threw that rock as a fin slow motion. Oh no, he hit Darnell, he hit Darnell, he ran over to Darnell, he said, Darnell, speak, speak. And Darnell stood up and went, whap, dunk, whap, dunk, which is different than, whap, ding, whap, ding. And he knew mom would know the difference. And just in that moment, his little sister Rosalia came out from the side and she said, ooh, you hit the duck, ooh, you hit the duck. I'm gonna tell mom, I'm gonna tell mom, please don't tell mom, please don't tell mom, I'll do anything. She says, all right, mm, pull me in my wagon. So she jumped in her wagon and she yelled, pull, pull, or I'm gonna tell mama, pull, pull. So off he ran around the house one time, two times, three times. She said, on Dancer, on Prancer, on Donner, on Blitzen, you two Rudolph, pull, pull, or I'm going to tell Mama, pull, pull. So around he ran and ran and ran. He, he stopped. We're almost done. I can't go anymore. 
if I go anymore, I'm going to die. His little sister said, we all have to go sometime. Pull, pull. Uh, pull, pull. He went around and around and around and around and around and around and he stopped. We're at the end. <laughs> I can't go anymore. I got to get some water. I got to get some water. His little sister said, you go get some water and then you get right back. And so he started off towards the house, thought about what his sister was doing, and he decided, I'm going to tell mama myself. And so he came to the house, grabbed the door, pushed it open, stepped inside, step, 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 until he was face to face with mama. And he said, mom, I was outside playing, hit the cans, and I threw the first rock, and I threw the second rock, and I threw the third rock, and I hit Darnell. I'm sorry, 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 I'm sorry. And while he was saying all those sorries, mom lifted her hand and she placed it on his shoulder. She's not that kind of mom, not that kind of mom. And she said to him, I know, Enrique, I know. I saw the whole thing. I was in the kitchen when it happened. I happened to be looking out the window, and I saw the whole thing. And you know what, son? The moment you hit the duck, I forgave you. The moment you hit the duck, I forgave you. I just needed for you to come in and be forgiven. Now, boys and girls, Jesus is just like that mom. He sees everything that we do. And when we do a bad thing, he sees that and he forgives that. Yes, grace is grace. Well, you know what? All he needs is for you to come to him and be forgiven. Uncle Minnie's going to pray right now that you always remember that and very important lesson that Jesus forgives you. Even when you do a bad thing, he just needs for you to come to him and be forgiven. Everyone close your eyes and bow your heads. Dear Jesus, thank you for the boys and girls who sit in front of me. Thank you for the lesson for them today that if they do a bad thing, you see it and you forgive them. You just need for them to come to you and be forgiven. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. For more stories with even bigger lessons, check out Children's Storytime with Uncle Minnie. Visit brightradio.org every weekend or its podcast every day. Bye-bye for now.